Wednesday. <laughs> Everyone's braced for a hurricane. Even when you're not in Florida, you can just feel it. Because we all have relatives and friends in Florida. Brother Bob is in Hobe Sound where we're not getting a hurricane, but on the east coast of Florida, tornadoes this morning and flooding rain. It's chilly outside. I don't know, I'll go check the thermometer in a second. But weather didn't really work out like we thought from a week ago. There's supposed to be a big trough coming in here, grabbing that hurricane, sending it up off the east coast. Well, none of that worked out. The trough is weak and it's not through here yet. It's been generating a lot of weather though. We had another plethora of rainbows on Twitter again yesterday and that's gonna happen again today. The wind is still from the west and southwest getting colder from the southwest with still that old upper level low off to our west and one after another cold front coming at us and kind of dissipating as that trough is kind of stuck in place. Very curious to know what the temperature is. Let's go check the thermometer <laughs> and the state of the Montauk daisy. <laughs> it doesn't, they don't care if it's warm or cold, right? All right, what's the thermometer say? It feels pretty cold. Oh yeah, it's right. <laughs> Uh, it says 52 degrees, so, and it's still colder up in the sky. Nothing in the rain gauge here yesterday. We have uh, a weak front, another one coming through. Every day we get a little bit of a cold front. The next day, a little bit of a colder front. Wow, that is a beautiful boat, huh? <laughs> Honey, you want one of those? Sure, I'll put it right on order, no problem. So do you need to pull your boats here in the Northeast? Well, it is going to get windy. The forecast for Ian has changed a little bit. Let's... Let's go day by day. Today, we're gonna have the showers and a possible thunderstorm developing and any thunderstorm can have small hail, torrential rain. And I think we're gonna have a bunch of rainbows again around six o'clock, mostly across the higher elevations, west and north, but one may make it to the coast. And then uh, tomorrow, high pressure starts to build in. That high is gonna be right over us this weekend, but there are some changes to the forecast of Ian a little bit, uh, well, a lot of bit across the southeastern United States. So it looks like most of the region here in the Northeast is gonna stay dry through the weekend. Cool, I mean, cold enough. My wife said last week, uh, don't we usually turn on the heat in the middle of October? That was about four days ago. It was September, what, 24th? And uh, it was cold and windy and it's gonna do that again this weekend. So the furnace is probably gonna come on early this year. But anyhow, that trough that was supposed to generate some snow in Mount Washington is just too weak, too flat, and it looks like Mount Washington does not get snow this week. So let's go to the tropics and then talk about next week. Ian is a monster. The eye of Ian uh, was a replacement cycle last night. It's a natural thing that the hurricanes replace their eye walls. One wears out, a new one forms. It's 30 miles wide, uh, just about 100 miles west of the coast of Florida. The hurricane force winds extend out about 40 miles from the center. It's a very symmetrical storm on most sides of the storm. So that puts the hurricane at about a, let's see, 40 plus 30 is 70 plus 40 is 110 mile wide hurricane. If you include the eye and there will probably be incredible images from the eye. Ryan, uh, one of our Blue Hill Observatory lunch here, weather career students studying in Miami says the temperature is in the 90s and the dew point is close to 80 and they've had more than five inches of rain. So this is an incredibly hot storm. Brother Bob and Hope Sound bracing for tornadoes this morning. The storm is now forecast so, so much for that uh, Canadian outlier hoping for a Gulf of Mexico. That has shifted. All the hurricane guidance now has it crossing the peninsula pretty close to Disney. Uh, just north of Orlando or right over Orlando and then back into the ocean on Friday and then kind of raking the coasts of Georgia and North Carolina Friday night into Saturday as it's still a tropical storm. Rainfall amounts in excess of 15 inches are possible, striping right across the country, across the state. Excuse me. So flooding, storm surge, Bonita Beach, maybe 12 feet storm surge, and then even away from the storm surge, flooding is gonna cross all of Florida. And then the storm may go post-tropical as it gets into the Carolinas and 
the guidance once again has shifted and most of the guidance tries to bring a little piece of it with the, so Ian's gonna break into pieces and a little piece of it may try and cross southern in New England on Saturday now and with the wind picking up on Sunday here and so we may end up with a couple of showers near the south coast and then it may come again next Tuesday uh, you look at the the 14 day forecast you can see those temperatures in Boston going down and once again we get a possibility of some showers Saturday and then maybe Monday or Tuesday it's been a Monday or Tuesday thing for the rain but it is going to be the fifth consecutive week with a high pressure coming in for our Friday and cold air and then if you look at the real long range there's another cold front coming at the northeast next Thursday Friday according to the euro that one may be cold enough for snow on Mount Washington so maybe snow guns come on late next week in those practices and you know, get the mice out of the the plumbing and also surf is up uh, we have five foot ten seconds now south of block island and even the boston buoy is now two foot ten seconds that has a lot more to do with that high pressure system way out over the north atlantic and that high is not going anywhere and we have a new high coming into the northeast and with that system coming up from the south surf is only going to build here over the next several days so there is your surf ski weather forecast and very exciting day yesterday. The house I grew up in now has a new webcam. Thank you, Michael McCormick and neighbors for coming by and cheering us on. Mad scientist in the house. Okay. Crazy fool outside of the house. <laughs> Drilling some holes. What would Albert think? Put What's that? What'd you say? Put, put this on one. Reverse. Mad scientist. Then hold this. So you want me to take the drill off and leave the bit in? Yeah. No problem. Cat 5, 5E. Michael the Mad Scientist now taping the wire to the bit. And then another Mad Scientist will just pull it through the hole inside the house. And I knew we could gather an audience. So we're drilling holes in Dad's house because we can. And uh, someone's going to go up to the top of the chimney there later in the day and put a web camera up there. When I was a kid, I used to just come out the window and climb up here. That was a long time ago. So now it's a little more scary, but let's see how it feels. Careful, watch each Walker webcam. Can we just take down a couple of those trees. Sealed up. Uh, weather? Yeah. Probably one or two. Okay, no hands for the most part. Or a Prius. I mean, uh, <laughs> sorry, a Tesla. <laughs> Teslas. Teslas. And it just turned the corner by itself? Yeah. Awesome. You're a mad scientist. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're gonna be putting lasers in the water lasers to measure the, water. the depth. It could harm the fish. <laughs> And then we'll get a picture of these seagulls flying around. Hello, Mr. Seagull. Really pretty. And that's Sandy Neck right out there. And unobstructed sunset views. Yeah, it does seem like a wide angle might be better. 